Everyone looks at bodybuilding as a very physical sport. It's all mental. You get to a certain point where you start getting really drained and tired, your body's telling you to sit down. Your body's not telling you to get up and lift heavy weights and do cardio. It's purely mental. If you're not passionate about it, you're not gonna keep going. You're not gonna stay on your diet. You're not gonna do more cardio or train harder. For me, it's, it's just mental. It's that drive, that passion. I keep envisioning being on stage on that Arnold Classic stage. I envision getting interviewed after winning the title by Arnold on stage. So that's what keeps me going. I love it. I shine in prep. I shine and I become brighter when I suffer. So we're here guys, Beth Francis Powerhouse Gym. It's technically my off day, but it's my second time here today. So on my off day, my second session, instead of training, I'll do cardio, calves, and abs. So we're here now for that, and then we'll do a little food shopping, eating, and resting afterwards. Hope you guys enjoy. I'll start off with abs, because sometimes you leave abs to the end of your workout and you get lazy. I start with leg raises. Hanging leg raises will really, really give you the detail and chisel out the lower abdomen and also the upper, upper quad. Basically, the insertion of your quad where your hip is, you get nice detail there. So it's an amazing, amazing exercise. Regular crunches. I don't believe in anything fancy for the abs, um, but it's very important to have a strong core and the detailed midsection. So you build those muscles, you get them defined and chiseled. So once you come down in body weight, it shows. Body fat and body weight. I don't even know if you can tell, my butt is lifting up very, very little, contracting my lower abs, and my shoulder blades are coming off the bench. Not much more. Sitting up fully, locking my feet in, sitting up would be more from the hip flexor, not necessarily crunching or contracting my two top abs. So these are real simple, real basic, but very effective. You'll feel the tension, you'll feel the burn. Just been grinding away, you know? Um, not too much drastic changes, just cardio, calorie deficit. Really working on conditioning and pushing it to the limit this prep, and I, I think I've accomplished that. I think I'll be my best yet uh, for the 2018 Arnold Classic. I feel good, I feel great. I feel like I'm in a great place. Uh, last few weeks has been great. I feel like I'm ready, um, on time. Uh, maybe even a little, little sooner, I'll be even better in 10 days. I'm at a six incline and at 3.2 speed. It's fairly slow, but as you can hear and see, it's working. I'm breathing heavy and I'm sweating, so this is good. And I'm not burning through any energy source. I just had protein so far today. I do zero carbs, so it is definitely a fat burning day for me. I'll be burning fat. I'll have some fats later in the evening, but mainly on my off days is protein, vegetables, little fat, no carbs. As you guys know, I have my meal prep NutriChef. So I don't, I'm not buying any carbs or protein. I get that from NutriChef. I'm just buying vegetables. So the vegetables I eat, I saute fresh daily. Um, so right now it consists of spinach, uh, green zucchini, onions, cucumbers are great for hydration, electrolytes, the baby spinach. You could eat it in a salad raw or saute it. This is one trick I have. Uh, dieting off-season anytime coleslaw um, and it just kind of gives you some texture and some substance to your meals it fills you up easily so this is almond butter it gets grind, uh, ground down fresh this is the closest you could get to really raw almond butter and when eating almond butter or peanut butter, it's very important to have just peanuts or almonds. Whereas if you look at a lot of the jars, we'll try to find some in the aisles. Um, there's a lot of other stuff in there, sugars, uh, other fillers and things mixed in. You want just almonds and possibly salt if you're getting salted. After a show, a lot of people will, will kind of get depressed and 
don't know what to do with themselves because we're on such strict routine, cardio every morning, training every day, and strict diet, and then there's so much freedom after a show, you don't know what to do. So I think keeping the structure is key, not only for your mind, but also for your body. If too many variables change at once after a show, you're gonna lose your conditioning and everything you worked really hard for. Um, and that sucks. So yes, you have a little bit of freedom of eating, but if you just go off your diet completely and eat a lot, it's a tremendous shock. You'll put on a lot of fat and a lot of water weight, which isn't healthy or comfortable. All right, so it is Wednesday today. I get my NutriChef food delivered on Wednesdays and Sundays. Over the years, I always cooked my own food. This past year, uh, I've been getting my meal prep from NutriChef, and it's been a huge, huge help. Not only do I not have to shop and deal with walking through the aisles of the supermarket and looking at stuff I don't have to eat, but um, you know, at the end of the day, I'm not a chef, and my food, when I cook it, is not always so consistent. So sometimes if I cook 10 pounds of chicken, and I overcook or undercook, I'm pretty much stuck with it. So either I have to throw it all out or just deal with, you know, stale chicken for, for a couple of days. So they send me the meals with these ice packs, again, twice a week. And I'll show you guys what my meals are looking like going into the Arnold. Okay, so my carb sources mainly have been sweet potato, white rice. So this is a sweet potato, how it comes. White rice, and I do some cream of rice meals. My protein sources, my first meal of the day is um, a lean steak, that's a hanger steak. So that's one meal a day of steak. This is the rice. I have one meal a day of white fish, which is bronzino. I have two meals a day of chicken breast, right there. This is more sweet potato. And I have one meal a day, this is new in my diet, of sushi grade tuna, raw tuna. Super, super lean, and it's a nice change. It's enjoyable. So those are my four protein sources. Chicken, which is about two meals a day, one meal tuna, one meal fish, one meal steak. I'm having about five meals right now, and about seven, seven weeks out. Um, so yeah, when I'm in prep, I have cheat meals, but a cheat meal is not, a lot of people don't understand what a cheat meal is. A cheat meal is not a break from your diet for you to have fun. When you diet, the human body, if you're at a calorie deficit and if you're training hard, the human body thinks it's dying. So it slows the metabolism so you live longer. In order to speed the metabolism back up, you have to give a surplus of calories. It can be higher in fat, higher in carb. So for me, I love burger and fries. That's usually my go-to meal. But I don't do it on Sunday religiously just because it's Sunday. I do it when my body needs it. And if it's done correctly, you will physically feel your metabolism ramp up. Hey, bud. Hey, how you doing? I'm good, how are you doing? Good, feeling good. I've been uh, following the plan the last three weeks. Haven't missed a meal, haven't missed a... Uh... If you're doing this and you love it, you're, you have to take the time to research. And the more you learn about something, the more you can deter from the, 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 the incorrect advice. Sounds good, I got your update uh, this morning. Um, so you've been two weeks now, you're up four pounds. Uh, which is a good sign. The main thing right now, we're focusing on strength and adding muscle. So the way you feel is the most important thing. If you're not really researching and you're just going on Instagram and asking somebody a question, you know, you're not really doing your own work and, and the passion, in my opinion, does, is not there for you, you know? So yeah, there's, you know, there's a lot of experts nowadays and there's a lot of coaches and that's because there's demand for it. When you have a lot of people that are beginning to work out and within a few months or a year they want to compete, they need a coach. So supply and demand. I, I mean, overall it's, it's good. I don't know, you know. What is, uh, what is not improving that you, you'd like to see improve? Uh, my lips, for just my legs in general, I haven't 
gone. A lot of people think of, you know, they hear the law of attraction and they might think it's this idea or this mumbo jumbo talk, but it's a law of the universe. You know, gravity is a law of the universe and so is vibration. People vibrate, they give off frequencies, positive and negative. And law of attraction is simply that whatever you give out, you get back. So if you're negative and angry and sad, you get back bad circumstances, bad people, and bad things happen. And if you're positive and upbeat and you give off positive frequencies, you get back positive people and circumstances and things. Okay, that takes time. Uh, legs is definitely a love-hate relationship for everyone. It's a little so hard work on its own doesn't necessarily pay off. Hard work while believing you're gonna succeed and thinking positively really matters. Thoughts alone are not that powerful. The way you feel really, really matters. So what Albert Einstein said, he said everything is energy and that's all there is to it. Match the frequency of the reality you want and you cannot help but get that reality. It can be no other way. This is not philosophy, this is physics. So what he means by match the frequency of the reality you want, if I want to be a millionaire, living in a mansion, driving a Porsche and a Ferrari, with a wife that looks like XYZ and two kids and a dog, how would it feel if I had that? All right, so send me the update again. You sent it to me today. So in six, seven days, send me the update and then we'll have another Skype call. Uh, what would my frequency, my vibration be if I had that? How would I feel? So you daydream like what a kid does. Adults think too, too realistically. Kids just get into the feeling place of their desire. Details and I'll be able to gauge what your body's telling me. All right, great, sounds good. All right, buddy, stay on track. So right. you need to get into the feeling place of your desire. Make a movie in your head. You envision that on a daily basis. You need to have a good relationship with a coach. To not listen to a coach and not tell them is not a good idea. It's tough to do it yourself. It's good to have a second eye, especially when you're very close to this show. As focused as I am and as mentally tough as I am, you second guess yourself and you, you, you need someone else's outside opinion. It's good. And you know, this man's very serious. You know, it's a pleasure to work with a lot of different athletes. I've worked with a lot of different athletes for the last couple decades. This guy's easily one of the most serious people I've ever, I've ever coached. You know, he's very focused, he's all business. And uh, you know, you're gonna see that in six weeks on stage. Uh, Two. The why is very important. Why you're doing what you're doing is very relative to what we're talking about. If you're trying to develop the body, so I've been trying to sculpt my body and have this perfect physique, which I don't believe it'll ever be perfect, but ideally that's what I'm trying to do. So that's my why, the art of bodybuilding. So everything that I do is based around that. So why you do what you do is more important than what you do and how you do it. If you know the why, you can fit in anything in life. If you know the why, you'll figure out the how. I feel like I'm going into this show now in 2018 as the underdog, but if I wasn't, it wouldn't make a difference. I, I do my best, I work as hard as I can. I've consistently improved since I turned pro in 2014. Every season I've gotten better. I'm continuing to improve, it's just the beginning for me. I'm just getting better and better.